night, everyone. This is Rome Knows Nothing. I am Rome. Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be the first true episode of Rome Knows Nothing. Um, I had the first episode that I uploaded. That was episode zero. And I did that just to do a little test and, you know, get the, uh, the pod bean website up and you know I was just testing it out seeing how things worked <clears throat> wanted to give you guys that that content as well so this will not always be a solo podcast um, I'm going to be getting some guests for different types of content so for movie Uh, specifically uh, superhero movie content. I will have somebody be joining me. I will have somebody be joining me for UFC content, MMA content, probably be covering some Bellator cards as well. So just so you guys know, I wanted to keep you everybody informed. Um, You know, you're not only going to be hearing me on the Rome Knows Nothing audio podcast. And a couple of those might be rebranded too. So, you know, it might not stay as Rome Knows Nothing. Rome might not know anything, but that's, uh, it's not always going to be the, how, how we brand and, and the, the name of these podcasts. That's, that, that might change up a little bit. So, for today, I have uh, my thoughts going to do a little ranting and raving on Thor Ragnarok. I wanted to give give that to you guys. Um got a little bit of news and rumors and stuff. Not a ton though. I'll talk a little bit about UFC 217. So I just want to keep this one short. So Thor Ragnarok, I really enjoyed this movie. There was a lot of good stuff. I thought that it was extremely pleasing to the eye. thought it was very well directed. The action scenes in particular were outstanding. The final action scene was amazing. I think I liked that better than the arena battle. Between uh, Hulk and Thor. I really enjoyed um, the villain in this one, Hela. She was probably my favorite MCU villain that we've seen so far. She was badass. I would like to see her again, but I don't know if that will happen. So there was a lot of things that I didn't like about this movie as well. Some things that I thought kept it from being probably an elite um, movie in the the MCU. And really a lot of the movies in the MCU, I don't think I, I wouldn't call elite. I just, most of them seem too one dimensional. I don't want to just talk about, about MCU movies too. I want to keep it to Thor. So I thought that the comedy was extremely over the top. I didn't think the movie needed to be as funny as it was trying to be. Some of the jokes worked, but a lot of them didn't work at all. Korg, I thought was very funny. Korg is hilarious. I'm pretty sure that uh, Taika Waititi played Korg as well. I think he was the in the mocap suit, which is really funny. He's a super talented guy. But I didn't think Thor needed to try to act like a stand-up comedian. I didn't think that he should be cracking jokes left and right every second. Every scene, he was cracking a joke. It was completely out of character for him, I thought. There were some good jokes. I laughed. They just didn't seem to fit. A lot of them were poorly timed, too. Any sort of emotional weight that the movie would have had, the jokes took it away. That's why it didn't work for me. I know that a lot of these MCU movies are lighthearted, family-friendly, funny. 
but I feel as if they should be a little pickier with their jokes. I don't know if somebody just goes through and punches up the script after it's done. I, I don't know what it is, but not everything needs to be funny. I really enjoyed Thor. I just had some complaints with it. I don't think that it was the best superhero movie that's came out this year. It's not one of the top couple MCU movies. At some point, I will do a sort of a spin-off uh, standoff episode where I go through and rank all the MCU movies. That'll be fun. I thought Taika Waititi did a great job. I think that this movie showed that he can work on a larger scale. We've seen him work on a lot smaller scale before with Hunt, uh, is it Hunt for the Wilder People as well as What We Do in the Shadows. But now we see that he can work on a larger scale too. So that was really great, I thought. So those are my thoughts for Thor Ragnarok. Uh, that's about it. I don't have much more to say on it. For news and rumors and stuff, I'm going to skip over a couple things that I had written down to talk about. Just to speed this up a little bit. So everybody's heard of Kevin Spacey. What's going on with him? Fired from the House of Cards show. I wonder how they're going to kill him off. They'll have to kill the character off. He dies in the book, I believe. I just wonder how they'll do that without being able to film anything with him. The show has already gone downhill a little bit for me. Nothing tops the first couple seasons of that, though. They were amazing. So we'll see what they do, but good on Netflix for for getting rid of him. Good on them for not not releasing the movie that Kevin Spacey produced and starred in. That was also, also supposed to uh, be released by Netflix. Good on them. It's just disgusting. Despicable. I really like him as an actor. But it seems like Kevin Spacey, the man, is... A pretty messed up individual. It came out that Kevin Spacey's brother has said that their father was sexually abusive. That's why this sort of thing just needs to stop. Stop that cycle. Stop that constant circle. I don't want to dwell on this though. So with that, the, another scumbag, Harvey Weinstein. Because of him, Quentin Tarantino is now looking for a new home for his next movie. His next movie is going to be based in the uh, Manson family uh, world, I guess. It's going to be set um, with a, it's sort of going to be a, like a backdrop of the Manson family. I don't think it's going to, you know, necessarily be a, you know, like a full, like personalized, like story. It's not going to be like some sort of biopic on the Manson family, but that's sort of going to be the setting I believe is what it's, what it's looking like right now. So that he's shopping that around to everywhere, but Disney is what, what was said. I thought that was kind of funny. Disney doesn't want any piece of a Quentin Tarantino movie, but it'll be interesting to see who picks him up. Obviously, he won't be going with a Netflix or an Amazon. He's not about that digital medium. He still shoots everything in film. His last movie, The Hateful Eight, had a 70 millimeter film release. It's the same thing that Christopher Nolan did with Dunkirk. I believe he did that with Interstellar as well. I'm excited for anything Tarantino does. Hopefully he doesn't stop making movies after the 10th. The Han Solo film. There's been a lot of talk out there about this one. Just with uh, Lord and Miller getting direct or getting fired as the directors. 
Ron Howard coming on. Apparently he reshot almost the entire film with some insane budget. <laughs> that'll be interesting to see. Maybe that'll be uh, critically the first flop for this new Disney Lucasfilm partnership or, you know, whatever you want to call it. I wasn't huge on Rogue One, but I believe I was in the minority with that one. So what else I got for you guys? Zach Efron is going to be in the new Halloween reboot. That'll be interesting. I'm excited for that just because I like that franchise a lot. So let's see here. Ah, uh, the big news. Apparently Fox and... Disney are in talks right now to for Disney to uh, purchase purchase 20th Century Fox, which is their film division. It'll be really interesting because this means that the rights of uh, the X Men and Fantastic Four would go to the Marvel Studios. That would be very interesting. I wonder how that would affect the actors and the franchises, the movies that are already in production, how would that affect Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool? How would that affect the X-Force movies that are being planned? I'm really curious about this one. I wonder what they would do. Would they keep some people and take some people off? Would they keep Ryan Reynolds because he's so popular and he's so good as that character? And would they get rid of people like Jennifer Lawrence? Obviously, the Fantastic Four would all be recast from the last movie. Those X-Men movies are very popular, though. What would they do? Would they would they bring back Wolverine? Cast a, a younger man to play Wolverine? Hugh Jackman's done, but still. The good thing about this would be that it would allow for uh, more complete storylines. It would be cool to see the, all these characters on the screen together. The bad thing is that you're going to get that same tone. That whole MCU tone is going to be the same thing for all those movies. They're going to look like that. They're going to feel like that. You're not going to get anything that feels or looks different. I like different. I don't want everything to look and feel the same. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll be glad if I'm wrong. I don't think I am, though. So, got some music to uh, talk for you guys. Just a little bit of hip-hop talk. The Big Crit album is fire. All the way through. I haven't heard some Big Crit in a while. I was excited to hear this. It's a double disc. It feels like a throwback. It's got a couple interludes, a couple skits that feel like some throwback skits too, and just something about it. But this dude can rap, and on this album he shows that he knows how to make a great song as well. The production is top-notch. The song with Lloyd is crazy. The sample on that one is nuts. The song with UGK is sweet. Always good to hear some Bum B. N.E.R.D. came out with a new song. I think it's called Lemon. Features Rihanna. Whoo! So I was wondering how that was going to sound. And then I was wondering how Rihanna was going to sound on it after, you know, I started the song after I hit play. Then Rihanna starts rapping. Oh, man. She was spitting, though. She was rapping better than most people I hear nowadays. Most of these, like, new artists that I hear. I would like to hear more stuff like this. Hopefully this is well received and hopefully she uh, she continues to do this moving forward in her career. Fabulous and Jadakiss, a couple of my favorites, are finally coming out with their Freddy vs. Jason mixtape. That should be coming out on Black Friday. They were on the Angie Martinez show and dropped that, that note. Very excited for that. That one's been like on the docks for a long time now. I think they haven't been able to clear samples or whatever it was, but 
it's been talked about for a while. So finally releasing it, that'll be nice. I'm, I'm excited to hear that. They released a new song called Stand Up featuring Future. That was really good. If the, or if the mixtape sounds like that, I'll be happy. And then also the week before, I think that's next week. Who next week, man. Eminem is coming out with a new album called The Revival. I wasn't a big fan of the Marshall Mathers LP2, but Recovery was really good. So hopefully it's going to be more like that. Either way, it'll be interesting to see what he does. I'm always excited to hear a new Eminem album. So that's about all the music talk I got for you. UFC 217 was really sweet. It was a crazy night of fights. There was a ton of finishes. I think there was only two uh, two fights on the entire card from, from top to bottom that weren't finishes. So I can't remember the last time something like that's happened. Three title fights, three belts changed hands. <laughs> that was just nuts, man. That was crazy. Farah Sahabi's brother got hit with this nasty spinning back elbow. Whew. That was wild. Seeing GSP choke choke Michael Bisping out cold. This was one of the best cards that I've seen in quite a while. I was excited for it. I was hoping that it was going to be one of the best cards that I've seen in a while, and it completely blew my expectations out of the water. So we'll see how these next couple pay-per-view cards line up. They look like they're going to be pretty good. That 218, the one at Detroit, that should be solid, but the New Year's Eve card should be even better. We'll see if Connor and Tony are going to fight. We'll see if we'll see what happens with the main event for that one. They haven't announced it yet. It'll be interesting to see where GSP goes from 217. Is he going to fight Connor? Is he going to move down and fight Woodley? Is he going to fight Robert Whitaker? what's going to happen with that? He said he's going to stay at 185, but man, 185 is scary for him. He looked a little gas there at the end of the fight against Bisping too. So I'm not sure if that's the route he wants to go, but even still Tyron Woodley is a tough fight. We'll see what happens. At some point, I'd like to see him fight Connor. That'd be good. So the UFC tweeted, or uh, actually, I think it was an Instagram post, maybe people were saying, and deleted a picture. It was this poster of Connor and Nate 3. That would be huge. That's what I want to see. I guess the fight to make is Tony versus Connor, but I want to see Connor Nate. Connor Nate would be huge. That's that's most exciting for me. I like watching Nate fight, and he's not going to fight unless he gets paid huge money. The only way he's going to get paid huge money is if he fights Connor. So yeah, let's book that one. Connor and Nate for for New Year's Eve. That's what I, that's what I'm talking about. So yesterday on the Joe Rogan experience, they did a, him and Brendan Schaub did a UFC 217 breakdown. And during this UFC talk, Rogan says that he heard from somebody who knows stuff, wouldn't reveal a source, came out and had an explanation for John Jones positive drug test. He said that the drug that Jones got popped for is common in creatine. Creatine is used to cut cocaine. How crazy would it be if John Jones did cocaine with creatine in it and pops dirty? For this other drug other than cocaine, which stayed in his system longer than the cocaine did. Rogan mentioned that John Jones had a birthday 10 days before his fight. 
Was he probably partying on his birthday? Did a, did a little cocaine and wound up doing a little something else too? That'd be interesting. It's not like you're ever going to find that out, but it's interesting to think about. Okay, so that's all the UFC talk I got. I'm not going to go into detail about these fights. I don't want to just rehash them with myself. That's why I'm bringing guests on, so we can go a little bit more in-depth about these subjects, about these topics. The episodes will probably be broken up a little differently. I'm not going to be talking about you know movies, TV, with the UFC. Break them up, you know, with my content, then me and my guests will be able to to talk a little bit more in depth about these things. I don't have much board game talk this week. I didn't do my game night or my game day. I did get a few games of Sentient in before the UFC fights on Saturday. That was really fun. Sentient's a great little game, man. It's a great little game. I wonder if they'll ever make any expansions for it. Maybe that'll be an ep- a board gaming episode that I could do when, when I don't have a whole lot of board gaming stuff going on. I could talk about games that, it, that I'd like to see expansions for. I'll be sure to have some, some more board game talk for you guys next week. Pretty soon here, we'll get these uh, podcasts episodes straightened out so you know we'll have our we'll have our UFC previews we'll have our news and rumor rundowns we'll have our movie reviews right now it's just sort of all a mishmash but moving forward that'll it'll all get straightened out and we'll start to see how everything takes place and how everything sorts itself out I'm really excited to see what happens I'm really excited to see where this goes I really enjoy talking into a microphone. I really enjoy, you know, I don't even care if anybody's listening. The listen back that I do on these episodes could be the only listen that it gets. And this is just cathartic for me. Get stuff out, get stuff off my chest, talk about stuff. I like it. All right. So thanks for listening, guys. Be sure to tune in to my Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, be updating with random stuff. Hopefully I'll do another video or two here in the near future. That YouTube channel is still, still going. I'm not shutting the YouTube channel down. Maybe I should upload these audio podcasts to YouTube. If that's something that you guys would like, let me know. I could also probably start recording me filming the audio podcast. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. Like to give content however I can. Like to please anybody that's actually out there listening and paying attention. So just let me know if you got any comments or anything like that. I'll be happy to talk to you, hear your suggestions. Thanks again for listening. I'll catch you back here next time, guys.